Diving in, we'll focus on the polarity between the Sun in Leo and the Moon in Aquarius. Diving in, we'll focus on the polarity. Full moons always present an opposition between two opposing energies, or sister signs, that need to find balance through their opposite. This is why so often opposites attract not only in friendships, but relationships. Humans are mirrors reflecting back to us, much like the full moon, what we need to see and learn most about ourselves. Opposition brings conflict that leads to evolution. The primary opposition we're seeing under the Aquarius full moon occurs between the sun, representing the spotlight of energy in Leo, in rulership in Leo, and the full moon, reflecting the light of the sun back to us from its position directly opposite in the sky in Aquarius. Since the moon represents the public in the chart of a full moon, this puts the people against its leaders, represented by the sun in Leo. And it can prove to be quite disruptive for politics. Buckle your seatbelts and prepare for more chaos and curveballs thrown by the universe. Remember not to ride the roller coaster. Find neutrality somewhere in the middle on the monorail or the lazy river of life. Get your bat and glove ready and be prepared to swing or catch whatever the universe may be throwing your way. The Aquarius moon. When the moon transits Aquarius, it's a great time to focus on the areas that Aquarius rules. And you'll find that to be quite well-rounded and dynamic. Aquarius rules astrology. I'm a North Node Aquarius. Is it any wonder I'm a professional astrologer? Aviation. Networks of transportation, especially planes and trains. Networks of transportation, information, and communication. Telecommunication. The respiratory and neurological systems of our bodies, space exploration, holistic healing, and even psychic experience, to name a few. On the positive, the moon in Aquarius is emotionally detached, creative, idealistic, humanitarian, equitable, progressive, and incredibly tolerant of others. It doesn't take things personally. In shadow or when imbalanced, moon in Aquarius can be very stubborn or set in its opinions or ways of thinking, AKA closed-minded. It can also be pretentious, unpredictable and aloof. And it loves to give the silent treatment as a way of punishing others by removing its attention or energy. It's a very selfish way of being. Aquarius is ruled by both Saturn and Uranus, both of which are directly impacted by T-squares under the chart of this August Aquarius full moon. Saturn, the planet of karma, restriction, time, and personal accountability, to name a few. The traditional ruler of Aquarius is not a planet that tolerates shortcuts, nor does it let us get away with anything. It grabs us by the collar and forces us to face up to things, especially the things we've been avoiding. And this is especially true in the escapist sign of Pisces, ruled by the planet of illusion and delusion, Neptune. This quote is from Susan Susan Miller, Planets and Possibilities. Uranus, on the other hand, is the Great Awakener, ruling change, revolution, individuality, and independence. Uranus is in its fall in the sign of Taurus, bringing a great collective awakening, especially when it comes to the things we value, our attachments or dependencies, and how we invest our time, energy, and money. Uranus is the flash of lightning that sparks insight and inspiration that leads to new awareness. It brings breakthroughs and breakdowns, and is therefore considered the higher octave of Mercury, with Mercury representing our logical or lower minds, and Uranus representing our higher consciousness and full potential. Moon on the cusp of Aquarius and Pisces brings Aquarius and Energy, with a strong, dreamy, creative, and deeply intuitive Pisces subflavor. Aquarius moon in the third and final decan of Aquarius. The third decan of Aquarius covers the territory from 20 to 29 degrees Aquarius. It's traditionally ruled by Saturn, modernly ruled by Uranus, and subruled by Venus, which is currently fallen or weakened in the sign of Virgo and experiencing health issues or flare-ups at the 18th degree associated with Virgo energy and illness, especially when it's featured in a challenging T-square against Saturn and converging on the alignment of Mars and Jupiter in Gemini. I'll get into all of that a bit further on in the aspects section of the video. Aquarius moon, specifically 27 degrees. In degree astrology or degree theory, 27 degrees is a degree point associated with Gemini energy. So this full moon is closely tied to what's going on with Mars and Jupiter in Gemini and Mercury retrograde, which is changing signs, indicating a major change of heart or direction. Gemini is all about information gathering and dissemination. Mercury rules the realms of communication, journalism, marketing, advertising, the internet, AKA information highway, social media, and siblings, to name a few. The Sabian symbolism. Now I'd like to read, from, read for you the Sabian symbolism associated with the moon 27 degrees Aquarius. You'll remember from previous videos, and I'll remind you if you're new tuning in, with the Sabian symbols, they begin, instead of at zero degrees, they begin at one degree. So we need to pay attention to where the energy or planet or planetary body is headed or converging. In the case of the full moon happening 27 degrees, 14 arc minutes Aquarius, that moon would be heading or converging, we would round up to 28 degrees Aquarius. We'll also have to pay attention to the direction the planet is moving, and I'll explain that a little bit more when we get into the Sabian symbols involved in the Leo portion of this. Video. If you are following along, we are reading The Sabian Symbols, A Screen of Prophecy by Diana E. Roche or Roche, page 362 
Aquarius, 28 degrees. A tree felled and sawed. Keyword, immediacy. Theme, doing what needs to be done. This symbol speaks to foresight, preparation, and an ability to quickly grasp what, what needs to be done in a crisis and to do it. The image of a tree felled and sawed symbolizes practicality and a sacrifice of the lesser for the good of the greater. The emphasis here is on common sense, initiative, and the wisdom of not waiting until the last minute. One of the four horsemen in modern society is procrastination, after all, to get things done. Positive at its highest, this symbol represents industriousness and efficiency, or the type of individual who is prepared for any unforeseen emergency or event. Negative. Lack of imagination and creativity and a tendency to do things the hard way. Today, the accent is on being practical. You may find it necessary to sacrifice or use up one thing in order to create something better or fulfill a higher need. Opportunity. Your greatest advantage lies in using your common sense. Look for ways to create what you need from other things that you no longer need. Risk. Guard against being short-sighted or overconfident about the availability of your resources. Those can include your assets, your money, and the resources of food and water. Try not to get caught unprepared for an emergency. Plan ahead. Preparedness is next to godliness. Stepping stones include practicality, utilitarianism, functionalism, resourcefulness, skillfulness, constructiveness, fundamentalism, pragmatism, realism, productiveness, and sensibility. Tree felled and sawed. So this is after a tree has fallen and it's been chopped up and it's trunk redistributed to be used for other things as we adapt to that crisis of the tree falling. This can be symbolic of stagnant relationships, careers, jobs, or other connections falling apart. Leo Sun. We dove deep into Leo energy and Sun in Leo in our last series covering the new moon in Leo on August 4th. So if you missed that, be sure to watch with special attention to parts one, two, and six. At the risk of being redundant, I'm going to dive right into the heart of it, specifically focusing on Leo's polarity versus Aquarius and the energy specific to the third or final decan of Leo, with the Sun on the cusp of Leo and Virgo. The Sun on the cusp of Leo and Virgo is Leo with strong Virgo tendencies. This blends fiery, charismatic, bombastic, and alluring Leo nature with Virgo's grounded, down-to-earth, humility, attention to detail, and practicality. Leo Sun in the third decan. The third decan of Leo, covering the territory from 20 to 29 degrees of Leo, is traditionally ruled by the Sun and sub-ruled by Mars, which is featured as the converging point aligned with Jupiter in the mutable T-square, featuring Saturn versus Venus. This final decan of Leo is Leo with strong Aries undertones and determination. So now we're going to read the Sabian symbol for Leo 28 degrees. Since the sun is 27 degrees, 14 arc minutes of Leo will round up to 28 degrees Leo. I'd also like to read Leo 26 degrees and Leo 27 degrees first because of Mercury Kazemi. Mercury Kazemi happened 26 degrees of Leo with Mercury retrograde converging or heading toward the 26th degree of Leo. So that will represent Mercury's energy under the Kazemi and the sun heading toward 27 degrees of Leo and then the full moon the very next day, or coinciding, depending on where you are in the world, 27 degrees, 14 arc minutes, rounding up to 28 degrees. So read all three, because they're all relevant. Thank you for watching. If you're still with me, you're a real one. Drop your current most used emoji in the comments. If you took anything away from this video, we ask that you like, comment, share the content, and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, we know that you'll enjoy the full playlist and this additional video. Thank you so much. Love you, and see you soon.